Live at five, it's off a review. We're gonna talk about how much money I've spent on the game. Before I get into that, I just wanna say that it is a business expense, right? I mean, it's the cost of doing business. I'm able to write it off. And I completely predict that I have spent $400 a month, uh, which is a lot of money, if you know anything about it. But if you want to find out how much money you spend on the game, you click the support button, and then you hit the little thing right here and I'm in the way, but you have to answer a bunch of questions. And I, and, uh, I did it on my phone. So the information's not shown here. And then I screenshotted it. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I was actually really surprised by the number that I had. And my experience has been when people, uh, get their number from customer support, it is a lot higher than they expected. And so I am going to show you why I was surprised by my number. Uh, I played for 1,925 days. As we do some math, 1,925 uh, divided by 30. So that means I have played the game for 64 months. And I believe I've spent or $400 a month times $400. So my best guess is that I've spent $25,666.67, and I was completely surprised that I had basically spent exactly that amount. $25,814. I was off by like, what is that, 150 bucks? So, uh, and that's because I track everything, and I'm pretty disciplined and everything like that. So, that's how much money I've spent on the game. Uh, so that is about, you know, $400 a month, almost to a uh, very close within like a, a tenth of a percent or something like that. All right, let's get in with offer review. And believe it or not, there's actually uh, Reddit was pretty positive today, which is really strange. Uh, loving, love getting a random maintenance shortly on my screen. So what that was for was that they updated the game so that you can do imported squads. So you can load a code in and update your saved squads. And they give you instructions on how to do that right here. When you log into the website, when you click on your name, it has a save squads tab. And then you come in here and then you hit import. This is an import squads into this tab. Uh, first get the import cord you wanna use, uh, press the manage button, then import button. Finally paste the code into the input screen and press okay, for example. Now, I uh, gotta give a shout out to Pathfinder Gaming. I've used his code right here. There's a long code. I will put a link to this video in the game and he has set up a very good Blitz Save Squad. I ran it and it was doing better than what I was doing before. And oh my God, it was so simple, right? Um, I didn't find this process to be that simple or intuitive. I actually found it to be a little bit clunky, um, but it did work. I actually deleted like my raids accidentally before I could actually get my blitz one to work. So this is actually kind of a big deal. Now let's talk about, uh, I hate Cosmic Crucible, 10 million punch up. Oh, I played it well, but not confident victory, but why in Alabama heck is this crucibles are decided? Why is TCP is the factor? I actually think that TCP is a terrible choice. And I know that people say it should be the smaller or the higher. I don't think it should be a choice at all. I don't think the tiebreak, it's a dumb idea. It's it's an absolute dumb idea that the that the crucibles are decided by collection power. Why is TCP power of 10 million punch-ups all the time? Because TCP doesn't matter that much in KC at this point. I'm Randy, because honestly, you couldn't have some other factor be the decider. And then this screenshot shows that he got a tie and he just lost. I thought this was a pretty good... I mean, if they're gonna have some sort of random way of winning, which is not helpful or meaningful based on your battle, why didn't they just do it like this? I feel like a better option will be the high score in room one. Sure, if you're gonna have a dumb way of deciding a tiebreaker, at least have it tied to what actually happened. That's a tie move to room two. At least it's not just arbitrary favoring a player simply for playing the game longer, spending more money. I, yeah, this would be a million times better in my opinion. Uh, if that tiebreakers were decided that way. <laughs> and then the thing too is like, wow, Reddit is not salty today, which is very interesting. And I, I actually got found this post to be refreshing and I giggled a little bit. It's like, why are you here? Reddit's for salt and hating this game and just saying, you know, without having any reason to hate the game really, because I do love this game. Uh, and yet, you know, we, we, we a lot of times we, uh, 
want the game to be better and so we voice our concerns and that you know oftentimes that's very negative right uh so i started playing the game in 2018 as something to do i love marvel only mobile game i've kept my phone for a week let alone a year i've been free the entire time i've achieved quite a bit in five years sure i get crushed a lot some of my best teams and yes, I get a little upset, but that's a game. Just just enjoy the ride. So let's have fun. Some positivity. Yeah, I don't know. Let's have some fun. Huh? I just like to say thank you where credit's due. As a big game player, one of the most annoying farms for me is Cree Minions. So I've neglected them as much as I can. And I have a five-star Fury. The plethora of free Cree Minion shards and the incursions are greatly appreciated. Now I can get a six-star Nick Fury. Where's the salt? Where's the salt? <laughs> Here's the salt, man, on Reddit. It, Reddit's like positive today for some reason. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Great question, please help. I'm leader of my team and I can uh, start raids daily, but I'm the only one who starts raids. I think uh, I remember being another team, uh, being a captain, having the ability to start raids all. Yeah, you just have to get other captains uh, to help you start the raids, but also uh, they're supposed to be coming up with an auto launch feature, so that won't have to be a thing uh, going forward. Now, we got some offers. Um, we talked about this offer yesterday. If you uh, get your magnifying glass out, this offer actually states exactly what's in it. Equal chances of 50 Hulkbuster shards, 100 vision shards, and then a six red Hulkbuster, a seven red vision, and a four star vision. So for me, you know, I don't need uh, these three items here, uh, but I could use these two items. So it's just like if I want to purchase, you know, a six red Hulkbuster and a seven red Vision, you know, I could do that and have a random chance of getting, you know, 20% 20, 20 of that, 20% of that. So 40% of what I want for five bucks. I, I might do that. I'm not really sure. Uh, it seems reasonable enough. Uh, this offers a little bit disappointing to me because on the 20th, we're going to have a gold orb opening, a glorb. I, gold orb opening kind of hard to say a uh, million gold for 10 bucks and uh, we got some training meals there's nothing super special about this but uh dark promotion credits are in high demand uh if you're a purchaser of leets uh they typically try to sell in a, a six for like 75 bucks well this is half of a six and a whole five a five they usually try to sell for 35 bucks i'm not going to buy this but i think people that purchase i feel like the value of these has dropped a lot like i don't know what i would I don't even know if I pay $10 for this, to be honest with you. All right. And then I thought this was pretty good. Spider-Man $20.99. Not really being used as much anymore in the arena now that we've got Apocalypse, but still a very important member inside of Cosmic Crucible, and that's super annoying. Uh, room 5, right? Cheetah Room 5 with Eternals and Tangled Web. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Anyways, 50 character shards for $5, and you get some other useful goodies. I mean, this stuff is useful, right? And then we've got another one. So uh, I don't know what the dark promotion credits are valued at. I, I haven't figured that out, the math on it. But this is uh, not especially great. I put this about $2.5. And then Scopely values 715,000 of these at 100 bucks. So 25,000 is not like a super meaningful amount. But you need uh, 715,000 to take a single character from Blue Iso 3 to Blue Iso 4. But anyways, if you're looking for dark promotion credits. And uh, another offer here, again... Um, you know, uh, I think this, oh, let's see, I think this one is a little better than this one right here. What's, so it's toggle between these two. Oh, uh, we got 1 million and 200. This one is 1.5 million, 150. So if you're looking for more gold, you have two different choices. This one will give you more gold and that one will give you more training materials. So consider that. And then this is, you know, this kind of annoys me. Uh, Bendable Straw has opened up a bunch of these and got next to nothing. And yet it says earn up to 5 million T2 level 5 ions. I mean, that's like a 1 in 2,000 chance. Uh, and uh, there's a chance you get nothing out of this. Like, this is a complete garbage. I think Bendable spent like 100 bucks on it, and I showed the clip, and it was not good. Uh, the problem I have with this is in-game, if you click on this orb, it doesn't tell you what the contents are. You have to back out of this the, the offer screen and go into the orb screen and click on it to find out how bad these orbs are. They're atrocious. Anyways, I don't recommend this offer. And it's also annoying that you can't just click on the orb and see the, the drop rates. Uh, terrific team offer. So this is going to be useful for uh, the Archangel Scourge, typically the Ravagers. 
Uh, Ravager minions were the best ones on the, the first two nodes of the Ravager Scourge. Uh, they're not really useful anywhere else. Uh, not really. Um, you know, they, they've, they've actually been pretty disappointing inside of even war. They had a n narrow window where they were useful. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, Avengers team. Now, uh, these characters are kind of spread apart different teams now. They're not really like Wave 1 Avengers anymore. Largely Hawkeye and Black Widow are benched. Thor's on Heroes X Guardians, uh, Hulk's on Gamma, and now Captain America's on Rebirth. And then we've got another team right here, uh, which will help you out with the Archangel Scourge and also the Raid Nodes. Kind of pricey, but you know, if you want to get this team up and running. And then lastly, I'm thinking about buying this, but I think this is the best pricing I've seen on Agatha. The problem I have with this is twofold. Uh, she's been out for a year and they're milking every penny out of Agatha. And it seems to me that I pulled a seven red Agatha uh, when she came out and I have not had the yellow stars and I'm just kind of dragging my feet. It's like, do I really want to spend 20 bucks to get 200 shards and then be done with her? I feel like a character should be farmable at the one year mark. Like, I know they've done that before with like Icarus and Emma, but I don't know. It's just kind of annoying. And I sense that they're going to do that uh, with other characters, probably like Kang is special and Zombie Iron Man is special. I'm sure Quicksilver is going to be special, although we don't really know what's going to happen with Quicksilver. All right. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Also, if you do go and uh, message customer support, love to hear if the number that you get from customer support is higher or lower than you thought. And if it's a lot higher than you thought, uh, post it in the comment section. I, I'm, I'm very curious uh, how it works out for you. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Keep on gaming.